Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Marisa and today we're gonna talk about 10 regrets that people have made when designing their home. Recently I posted a question box on my Instagram feed and asked people to share with me the regrets that they have from their own home renovations. If you are unfamiliar, I have a video called 10 regrets or 10 mistakes I made designing our kitchen and you guys, the information I share on there is super valuable. It's one of my most popular videos here on YouTube, so I'll link it here below in case you wanna check it out after. But seriously, learning from other people's mistakes is the way to go. So, once I saw that that video was really taking off and that people were really enjoying hearing my mistakes, I thought, why not pull my Instagram audience and find out if they have mistakes that they wish they didn't make as well. And you guys, today's list is a doozy, so stick around. Today I'm gonna to share 10 mistakes that hopefully you won't make when you do your renovation. Okay, before we dive in, just a reminder that I post new design videos every Thursday. So if you're interested in getting new content all about interior design, then I would love for you to hit subscribe and be a part of this community. While you're at it, tap that bell so that you're notified every time there's a new video because lately I've been posting more than once a week and I'd hate for you to miss something. So these are in no particular order. These are simply the comments I got when I posted the question on Instagram and I chose my 10 favorites. Here we go. Number one, I use light grout in my kitchen along with the light tiles. The grout is impossible to keep clean. Okay, very good thought. Light floors in kitchens can look really great. This is not the first time I have heard people with light grout with their light tiles really hating how dirty it gets, specifically in the kitchen. I think it often has to do with the traffic in a kitchen and we cook in the kitchen. So things that even we don't see are like splattering and landing on the ground and grease and you know, different things are filling up the floor. And even when we wash them and try to keep it clean, I've heard that the light grout in kitchens can really be a pain. And I mean, if you don't mind getting down on your hands and knees and scrubbing grout, then good on you. But if you're like me and that's not a way you wanna spend your Saturday, maybe reconsider the flooring option in your kitchen. Okay, number two, this was a really good one. This person said, I painted the cabinets myself. I should have gotten them professionally painted. There's a fly. Yes, painting cabinets yourself. It's true, it's hit and miss. I did it in one of the homes that we lived in because I get it, sometimes you're like, I don't have the money to do this, but I want to get this updated because I can't stand the way they look. I totally understand that. When budgets only allow for us to do things DIY, of course we're gonna do it. But if you have the ability to get a professional to paint your kitchen cupboards, it will make a huge difference. In fact, a design project that I'm just finishing up right now, one of the things we did was had the entire kitchen painted. All of the cabinets went from a really rich, dark chocolate sort of deep brown shade to a beautiful Oxford white by Benjamin Moore. It looks so great, but we had a professional company come in. They removed all the doors and drawer fronts and took them into their workshop. They taped off the rest of the kitchen and then sprayed the boxes in place and then brought back the painted door fronts and drawers. And you guys, it just looks exceptional. Like exceptional because they spray the paint they don't roll the paint right big difference in how the final product looks often there is a product mixed in with the paint for these companies that redo them redo cupboards for you that just give it a little bit of extra durability so it won't chip or scratch or ding as easily as it would if you just were to like roll on a coat of paint you know i couldn't agree more if you can afford if you can wait do it right have a professional do it for you Okay, speaking about paint, somebody else said just painting over wood. So the specific example they used was their banister going down their stairs. They said they love the spindles being painted, they love the stairs being painted, and they put a runner down and all that worked out really well, but they can't stand that they painted the wood on their banister. Now, specifically, it had to do with the chipping and the wearing of a hand sliding down the banister and over time wearing off the paint and it just looked really bad. So it could just be the way that that was done or it could be, you know, maybe it was best to keep the wood exposed and sand it down and give it a fresh life with a nice coat of stain or maybe they just had a poor job. At any rate, always with something that's high traffic like that, speak to a painter, talk to a professional and say, listen, this is gonna be a high traffic area. 
what do you recommend that we could do that's gonna be durable and look really great in a number of years? Cause I don't wanna paint this thing every year. And they may be able to give you some really great advice like extra clear coats on top, different things that they have up their sleeve to help make sure there's life and longevity in the wood that you paint. Having said that, some people just don't like the look of painted wood, right? The beautiful tone, the richness of wood, the natural texture and grain that it has is just so beautiful that that could also have something to do with it. Sometimes that comes through when it's painted and then it just doesn't look as good. So something to consider if you're considering painting over wooden cabinets or wooden railing or, you know, something like that. Okay, well, let's just keep on the paint theme. This one says the wrong paint finish. Okay, yes, this is the thing, you guys. So certain paint finishes look better in different applications. So for example, I'm a huge fan of like a flat wall. I think a flat paint on a wall can look so rich and look so spectacular. However, certain applications of flat paint would be terrible to use. An example would be if you don't buy the right kind of finish in a flat paint and put it in a bathroom, it will start looking shiny and like condensation will stick to it and ruin the finish and it will look terrible. So definitely check if you want a certain finish of your paint, make sure that that is the correct application for that finish. Talk to people at the paint store, talk to a professional painter. There are so many options with really great paint these days that almost any finish can be used in any application if you buy the right paint. So great one. I'm so glad somebody mentioned that. Okay, these next two were really similar and I found that really interesting. One says, don't settle just to get it done. And the other one was take your time. And so it's really, really true. I mean, I'm living through a renovation right now. If you haven't seen those videos, I will link one of them below. We are vlogging the whole process of living through a home renovation. Hence, my desk right now is in my bedroom and this has become my makeshift office because living through a renovation, you know, requires some sacrifice. And if you're in the process and you're like, forget it, I just want to get it done, you definitely will end up skimping on things and skipping corners. And when you're finished and all of the chaos of living through a reno is done, you will be dissatisfied with the final product. So I completely agree with both of these pieces of advice. Don't settle just to get it done. Wait, hold out, wait for that piece that you've been imagining, wait for the very specific thing that you know will fit your design and your scheme really well. Don't rush to finish the job. If it goes longer than anticipated, which it almost always does, then just be prepared for that because the end result will definitely be worth it if you don't rush. Okay, we're gonna do something a little bit different today and that is I'm gonna ask a question of the video. You guys, since the 10 mistakes I made designing my home has been so popular and since people have been quick to share over on Instagram what the mistakes they made were, I'm curious, what are some of the mistakes you made when you redid your space? Could be design related or decor or furniture, you know, whatever it might be. Share with us in the comments below so that we can all learn from your mistakes and we don't make them ourselves. And listen, it could be a small mistake or a large mistake. Some of the most frustrating, annoying things that I live with are teeny little mistakes that I made that are not the end of the world. But if we can avoid them by learning from others, then our lives will be a little bit better. Okay, this was a really interesting one. So this person said that they never considered the future use when they were designing the current use. So they were saying, you know, we put all of this money and in investing into making our kids' bedroom look spectacular only for them to move out three years later and nobody wants to be in that room because it's very specific to that child. So had they considered the future, they may have been a little bit more selective in what they put their money in. If your money goes into the fixtures and the finishes, those are really hard to change. But if the money would have just gone to like pillows and duvet covers and art on the wall, that could be swapped out really easily three years down the road and give the room a whole new vibe. When we redid our home five years ago, our kids pushed for a whole lot of crazy things. And we said, this hardwood floor is going through the entire upper floor. Whether you like it or not, we are not putting different flooring in your bedroom because we were thinking future. We were thinking, what, we're, what are we gonna use this space for if they're not here anymore? If we end up changing the rooms out for different purposes in our home, we're not gonna want something crazy in one of the rooms just because that was what a child's preference was. We'll paint the walls, we'll give them bedding, we'll do fun things for art, all that stuff is super easy to change over time, but definitely the main expensive fixtures and finishes, 
think about what that room is going to be used for in the future. Which brings me to the next point, which this person says they didn't consider resale. So they tried to put their home on the market and got lots of feedback repeatedly about reasons why people weren't putting an offer in on the home. And it came down to some of their design decisions were so unique and personal to them that it was not appealing broadly to a buyer. So you have to really think about this one. I may choose to say I'm definitely putting something in here that I know is not broadly appealing. In fact, I'm doing that in my design right now. But my, my thinking is the rest of the house is really done in a way that could appeal to many different styles. Very monochromatic. There's not lots of, you know, bold things in my home. Everything has a really neutral background. Many different styles could come and say, yes, I see myself living in this home. But I am putting a light pink tile in my girl's bathroom. And some people might look at that and say, I don't like that. But in the grand scheme, I don't think it would turn off a buyer from the home. But imagine you had done that with every finish in your home. The flooring was unique to you and the tile that you put in your kitchen was unique to you or the bathroom was extremely unique to you. And then a, a home buyer walks through and they're like, there's too much work to be done. Too many tiles to be ripped up, too many cupboards to be taken down, too much flooring to replace. That's a lot harder for a buyer to buy into than simply throwing on a fresh coat of paint that feels more like them. So excellent. I stink and love that. Consider resale, even though you want to be unique and do things your way, just have that thought. Have the resale thought in your mind. Unless you're planning on staying there for years and years and years and you don't care, then just you do you. Okay, the last two mistakes people made. This one says, I skimped out where I should have invested. I completely agree. Don't skimp out on things that really truly should be an investment. Now, let's talk about this. There is a wide range of prices for something like hardwood flooring. You can get really inexpensive hardwood flooring all the way to like stunning, high-end, really luxurious hardwood flooring. So within that range, obviously there's a low end and a high end, you can still get lower grade quality hardwood and still end up with a really great end result. But you don't want to skimp out and really go cheap in places that you clearly should have invested more money in. So an example of that would be things that happen behind the walls that are unseen. Something to do with your plumbing or electrical, things to do with your HVAC, opting for like the super inexpensive grade carpet in your bedrooms when really if you would have waited a bit longer and invested in the next level or two up it wouldn't have worn as quickly and looked dirty so fast looking around to find the cheapest person to upgrade your roof for you instead of going to a reputable roofing company who you know is going to do it right i can't tell you how many times i've seen people say i got a great deal on getting my roof reshingled only for like the first rainstorm it to be raining in their house and huge headaches ensue but yeah you saved you saved a couple bucks but in the long run the money and the headache and the time that's going to be put into fixing what they did wrong is definitely not worth it even if it means pressing pause and holding off on your plans for another year or so or however long it takes for you to save up the money to do it right definitely invest on doing it right the first time I've heard people actually say, let's save money on our bed. And so they skimp out and they buy like a super cheap bed. Well, now they're living with sore backs and terrible night sleeps and one person just barely moves and the other person's getting jostled all around. Really don't skimp on where it's really truly gonna matter. If you're gonna skimp, skimp on something that's really just an extra bonus. Skimp on, you know, the artwork or the table lamp or the throw pillow. You could always down the road upgrade those, but don't skimp on where it's gonna matter. So think about where it matters most to you and let that really be your determining guide. What's gonna matter the most to me? I'm gonna invest there. And last but not least, this person said the biggest regret that they had when they were updating their home was waiting so long to do it. So in this particular case, they had made an, up, an upgrade by painting and they had put off painting for a really long time and then when they finally pulled the trigger and said, we're doing it, we're painting it, let's just get it done. They were shocked with the result and they were like, we could have this entire time just by putting on a coat of paint been living with a space that we love that much more. Like what a difference a coat of paint makes. So they wish they would have dove in and done it a little bit quicker than they did. You know, sometimes just pulling the trigger and diving in is the best. 
sometimes it could backfire. So you have to know yourself and know how you make decisions. But I thought that was a really interesting thought for a mistake is that I did it. I didn't do it soon enough. You guys, I hope this has been really helpful for you as you're thinking about your design projects and the different things you're working on for your home. Learn from other people's mistakes. If you have not yet seen the 10 mistakes I made when renovating our main floor, I'll link that video below for you. I hope you check it out and I hope that it's super helpful for you so that you can do your design project and end up with a home that you truly love and that reflects you so beautifully. Thanks for watching you guys. Have an awesome day and we'll see you next week right here at I Am Loved.